What do you like in the newsreels? This article tells you what types of subjects the editors of these celluloid newspapers believe to be the most popular. By Agnes Smith. Picture Play Magazine. August 1923. Who is your favorite movie actor? asked the first fan. The Prince of Wales, answered his friend. The Prince of Wales never has received one cent or a halfpenny for appearing before the camera, yet he is one of the best known and best liked persons on the screen today. What's the answer? He is the one big star and the one best bet of the newsreels. I'd be willing to bet that the Prince receives fan letters from movie patrons. And I would be willing to bet, too, that if the fans were to decide their favorite form of screen entertainment, a great many of them would vote in favor of the newsreel. For, while the feature pictures may range from the perfectly wonderful to the perfectly horrible, the newsreel is a pretty consistent proposition. No matter how bad the other subjects on the program may be, the newsreel may be relied upon to save the evening from total loss. The fans don't hear much about the newsreel because it is one branch of the movies that has no press agent. No, the newsreels are sold to the public, not by expensive exploitation and publicity, but strictly on their merits, and because there is a real and steady demand for them. You never see the names of the men who are responsible for the newsreels, any more than you know the name of the reporter who writes the thrilling story of the fire for your morning newspaper. And yet, to me, the newsreels are the most interesting part of the film business. No false glamour, no studio politics, no cases of temperament enter into their production. The headquarters of the newsreels, Pathé, International, Fox, and Kinograms, are in New York, where all the subjects are received, edited, printed, and shipped. Into the small office of the news editor comes film from all over the world. The system of gathering the film has been perfected to a fine point. All the newsreels have cameramen stationed in New York and in all the large cities of this country. The cameramen are so distributed that even if there is a railroad accident in a remote section of the country, they can reach the scene in a few hours. Then too, most of the reels have cameramen in London and Paris, and in some of the other cities in Europe. These cameramen listen for rumors of wars, revolutions, royal weddings, and royal deaths. Naturally, in these times, they don't have to listen very carefully. Europe keeps them jumping from a wedding in London to a fight in Turkey and back again by way of a new coronation in the Balkans. Beside these men, who are staff cameramen and paid weekly wages, there are the freelance cameramen who sell film at so much per foot. The so much isn't a great deal unless the man is lucky enough or skillful enough to shoot something rare and exclusive. The newsreels are assembled twice a week. All the film that has been received is projected for the editor, and he makes his selection of the subjects. So much film arrives that the companies do not go to the expense of having it printed. It is shown in the negatives so that after looking at nothing but newsreel negatives for several months, you come out with the impression that Secretary Hughes is a colored man, and that all celebrities cast white shadows. The editorial policies of the newsreels are clearly defined. There are hundreds of reasons why subjects are not available for the reel. For instance, any street scene which shows an advertising sign is rejected, unless the subject is of such vital and timely importance that it cannot well be omitted. If advertising signs were shown, the newsreels would be opened to charges of graft. All events in a newsreel must be of nationwide interest and of general appeal. All the subjects must have life and human interest. Little defects often kill a subject. For instance, once a good picture of a football game was submitted to a newsreel. The cameraman had caught the game, but he had been careless and taken in a section of the grandstands that happened to be empty. The sight of the empty seats would have spoiled the game for audiences who wouldn't be interested in a contest that had failed to draw capacity crowds. What are considered good subjects for a newsreel? The biggest prize that a reel can bring in is an exclusive piece of news film on an occurrence of worldwide importance and significance. Path A scored a wonderful beat when it received the negative of the burning of Smyrna by the Turks. It was an ideal story. The Turkish war was headline stuff in the newspapers. The film had great pictorial value, and it had tremendous human interest. Selznick got a good story when it received the first pictures taken of Princess Hermina after her marriage to the ex-Kaiser. The cameraman waited in Dorn for weeks after the wedding, hoping to catch the couple out for a walk. By using all sorts of strategy, he managed to steal pictures of the princess and two of her children. Another famous beat, one of the biggest ever put over by a newsreel, was when International procured the Cruise of the Raider Merva films. 
These pictures were made by a German sailor on board the raider during the war, and they showed actual sinkings of Allied merchant vessels. They were shown in Germany during the war, but the Republican government, when it came into power, confiscated the prints and refused all offers for them. They were finally procured for International by one of that company's European representatives, who got them through an employee of the Austrian Foreign Office in Vienna. Photographing royalty is a funny proposition. Royal personages are vain, and only the young and good-looking ones willingly appear before the camera. The Prince of Wales is the best subject. Not only is he willing, but he films well, and he is always doing something interesting and I know a newsreel editor who estimates that he has shots of him in 94 different suits of clothes. The prince probably realizes that it is good publicity. Certainly, the newsreels have done much to pave his way for a popular reign. King George, his father, is camera shy, but he and Queen Mary know that it is good for the royal family to have their pictures often shown visiting the hospitals and smiling at the school children. A cameraman, stationed at Buckingham Palace, once wrote a report to his editor, can't get king in kilts. HRH is sensitive about his knees. Before the Kaiser so carelessly lost the war, he loved to appear before the camera in his gorgeous uniforms. But now that he is an old man and in disgraceful exile, he refuses to look at a camera. When he was married, he barricaded himself behind a regular Hindenburg lion at Dorn to protect himself from the dozens of cameramen who flocked to his wedding. George, the new king of Greece, is an excellent subject. Like the Prince of Wales, he is young, good-looking, and a stylish dresser. As the monarch of a temperamental nation, he knows that it is well to keep on the good side of Americans, and so he is extremely obliging about posing for American cameramen. The canny king knows that advertising always pays in a democracy. Stories of the money that is to be made in the movies have reached the Balkans. When a new king was to be crowned in Romania, the astute royal family held a council and decided to sell the newsreel rights to the ceremony, which was highly picturesque. But none of the American companies would buy it, so a French company bought the rights at a low price. However, an American cameraman sneaked to the scene of the festivities and stole a few scenes. The local cops caught him and threw him into jail, but it was after he had shipped his film. During the war, the newsreels went crazy on war stuff. Much of it was of legitimate interest, but much of it was crowded into the newsreels for propaganda. Naturally, the reaction has set in. The public is immensely weary of the sight of French generals kissing bearded poilus. The market value of English and American generals has depreciated too. The heroes of the day before yesterday are forgotten as quickly by the newsreels as they are by the newspapers. A newsreel fan has asked me why the reels are always showing so many pictures of battleships throwing smoke screens of late. He told me that a year ago, the reels were running nothing but pictures of big guns in action. These pictures of army and navy maneuvers are filmed either by army and navy cameramen, or by cameramen working under the supervision of government authorities. They are censored by the War Department before they are released, because sometimes the cameramen get too close and reveal the workings of the big guns or the newest invention in torpedoes. The newsreels run propaganda subjects for the army and navy not only because the subjects are usually good, but because they are so often obliged to go to the army and navy authorities for permission to photograph real news events. Strangely enough, football games are also censored. Several years ago, a cameraman took some slow motion pictures of the Yale-Princeton game. The analyzed scenes of the various plays were studied by the Harvard coaches, and Yale objected. Slow motion pictures are now forbidden and the cameramen, who must present credentials passed on by the athletic associations, are stationed at the top of the grandstands, where it is considered impossible to get good views of the plays. However, the camera is sharper and quicker than the eye. The cameramen use long-distance lenses, thereby bringing the plays closer to the camera, and they also use a special camera which retards the action slightly and shows the plays distinctly. The day after a big football or baseball game is an exciting one in the newsreel office for the men who work in the laboratory and the office boys, because the cameramen take a complete film record of the game. They never can tell, you see, when a spectacular play is coming along. So the news staff follows the game play by play without the trouble of making the trip to New Haven or the polo grounds. Only the best plays, of course, are used in the newsreel, but sometimes I think the public would really enjoy seeing the game in its entirety. All sorts of outdoor scenes are popular. The public doesn't seem to be able to get enough of winter sports, surfboard riding, mountain climbing, and high diving. 
The secret of the success of these scenes lies in the fact that they have quick action. Strangely enough, staged thrills are not so popular. The fans prefer the daring of real sportsmanship. A few months ago, an unfortunate daredevil, a human fly, fell while he was climbing up the side of a New York hotel. The news cameras were following his climb, and the men kept on grinding after he started to fall. But, of course, his death wasn't shown in the reels. These poor stuntmen are always willing and eager to pose for the newsreels. All they ask is $10 and their name on the screen. In cases of accidents or tragedies, the newsreels won't go as far as the newspapers in presenting gruesome details. At the time of the murders at Mer Rouge, Louisiana, a cameraman traveled to a Morehouse parish and took pictures of the search for the bodies of the murdered men. He was on the spot when the bodies were discovered and brought to the surface of the lake. The caption sheet, which is always sent with the film as a guide to the editor, read something like this. Members of the National Guard near the lake. Group of rescue parties. Bodies floating near bushes. Closer view of bodies. The Selznick News realized that it had a big scoop, and I went to the projection room to look at the negative, fully prepared for what was coming. We even debated as to the possibility of showing the murdered men on the screen. But after we saw the negative, never and never again will I look at a gruesome subject. A few morbid persons in every audience might want to see a scene of that sort, but I really believe if such a picture were shown in a newsreel, a great many persons would leave the theater. In editing the subject, we showed a long shot of the bodies, almost hidden by bushes. And in the title preceding the scene, we were pretty careful about coming out pointedly and stating that the bodies were there. And the scene was cut as short as possible. It was only used because it was an excellent way of awakening the public to the fact that something truly atrocious had taken place. To get to a more cheerful subject, celebrities are great material for a newsreel, and there are two happy hunting grounds for them, the Capitol at Washington and the steamship docks in New York. How we do love pictures of distinguished foreigners shaking hands with President Harding. How we wait for the annual fall arrival from Europe of Mary Garden. Mary wears such beautiful fur coats, and she has such a way with news gatherers. We like to see our ambassadors and our Charlie Schwabs at close range. Secretary Hughes is a frigid old party, but he is impressive. Ambassador Harvey never smiles, but we like to imagine how he looks in knee pants at the court of St. James. Lord and Lady Mountbatten, so good-looking and democratic, were godsends to the cameramen. Lady Asquith is far from attractive-looking, but everyone is curious about her. Women adore close-ups of the rich and great. Men prefer views of Babe Ruth at his farm, and snappy scenes of prize fighters training with their sparring partners. Every American gets a thrill at the sight of John D. Rockefeller playing golf down in Florida. Oddly enough, William Jennings Bryan is a pretty good newsreel attraction. Ever since his illness, ex-President Wilson has fought off cameramen. But last fall, he appeared on Armistice Day and made a public speech. It was the first time the cameraman had been able to catch him since his defeat. The audiences gave him a tremendous welcome. Harding, who has never aroused so much feeling, is not so popular in the newsreels. But when Mrs. Harding took a trip to Florida and was photographed for the first time in many months, she was received with applause. The public knew that the first lady of the land had been dangerously ill, and it took a friendly interest in seeing her up and around again. For some reason or other, opera stars are more popular in newsreels than either stage or screen personages. The public only knows them by their phonograph records, and likes to get a glimpse of them. And then, too, there is more prestige associated with them. The ordinary congressman, very ordinary, Will Rogers would say, is a total waste as a drawing card. Only an extraordinarily fine personality like Uncle Joe Cannon can emerge from the obscurity of Congress and become a figure of importance. The average mayor is a handicap and not half so interesting as the prize-winning baby in a baby parade. Baby parades don't come under the ban of most parades. A smiling baby or a playful kitten is better material for a reel than a third-rate royalty or the richest man in any state of the union. What are known as trick subjects are good if they are humorous, but impossible if they look posed or staged. An old woman, 110 years old and still able to smoke a pipe, makes a fairly good subject, provided that the old woman doesn't look as though she had been dug up in Egypt. Armless and legless men who are able to perform astonishing feats may be immortalized in the newsreel if the cameraman is careful not to make the subject too gruesome. Pet snakes and alligators are offensive to most women. Usually, they are omitted. 
Animals with human intelligence are likely to show signs of too much coaching from the sidelines. But one of the funniest pictures I ever saw was the sight of a dog on ice skates. Another amusing animal picture which made a great hit at the big theaters showed elephants being unloaded from a steamer. The huge animals were hoisted from the hold by derricks and swung through the air to the dock. Two comedians from a Broadway musical comedy once dressed themselves in a camel skin and went to Central Park and posed with a real camel. It was what is known as great stuff. I haven't said anything about the perils of the life of a news cameraman, but enough could be written and has been written on that subject to make several other articles. Yet the cameramen take the occasional hazards that come their way lightly. The hardest thing in the world, a cameraman once told me in answer to a query about the difficulties and dangers of his occupation, is to make an English beauty look as pretty as the newspapers describe her. And there you have the real peril of the business.